it is truly an embarrassing, pathetic joke, which other companies like Intense and the Cowboys at Barber DTS are actually inviting. I mean, the, the stupidity in this company is breathtaking. Before I said I have nothing against them. Now it's personal. Now I do. Welcome back, Degenerate. Today's topic is about ink manufacturers' complacency, stupidity and ignorance. And in case Ryan Ashley or Intense Inc's legal department are actually wondering whether that's a smear campaign, yes, it most certainly is. But we'll put a useless disclaimer on here. And it's useless because it doesn't actually hold up in court. And also because it doesn't actually say anything legal on it. I don't want this channel to turn into some kind of hygiene police department. There's way too many cringy tattooists, companies, thoughts and fuckboys to focus on. But it's important that I do deliver this fully unbiased report to you today. Some of you got pretty upset because of my video on tattoo models and shit. But listen, here's the thing. On this channel, we're fair. We punch up, we punch down, we punch men, and we punch women. I don't discriminate at all. I hate each and every one of you equally. It's all about humanity. Listen, do you know what Sriracha and Intense Ink have in common? The lid. Now, I'm gonna explain that one really slowly because I figured some of you have issues when it comes to hygiene. All of a sudden, everybody has learning difficulties. Now, let's examine what happens to the Sriracha sauce when I administer some on my delightful chicken wrap. I make contact first and twist the exterior walls of the exterior part of the cap first to allow the sauce to travel through the interior walls of the interior part of the cap first. Then the sauce makes contact with the exterior twisty part of the cap again it flows under and over the little pointy bit of plastic that acts as a bottle seal and then it hits my delightful chicken wrap. So all together the sriracha sauce had three points of contact with what is considered a non-sterile object. To make matters worse, some contents collected on the second and third point of contact will be flushed back into the bottle through the second and first point of contact. This is what I call a reasonable system. Then I make contact with the twisty part of the exterior lid and potentially the little plastic bit that acts as a seal again to fully close the bottle. And then I put the sriracha away in my station or my cupboard at home where I like to keep my sriracha and I keep repeating the same cycle again and again till eventually the bottle is empty. I'm using a pizza example because a lot of you like pizza and this way you won't get emotionally invested and reject this simple concept. There's no problem with sriracha because sriracha won't be injected in the client's system with needles. You see, the exact same thing is happening when we're pouring tattoo ink into our ink cups. You see, it's very easy to contaminate the top part or the twisty part of the lid because to open by design, they have to be touched by the operator on the areas that have direct contact with ink or source. And every time we do that, there's three points of contact out with a non-sterile object and then two back in. No idea. Now let's examine what's happening with the American's number one mustard sauce. I make first contact with the external cap that never comes in contact with the sauce. The mustard travels through the interior walls of the bottle cap that is exposed to the environment for the brief moment you're using the bottle and pouring the sauce on some ass. I don't know what you're into, mate. And after, I make contact again with the exterior cap that again never comes in contact with the sauce and close it, at which the sauce makes contact with another element that essentially acts as a seal. But that element is only exposed to the environment for the brief moment we're using the actual bottle and doesn't require the operator to touch the areas that will actually come in contact with the source or inks 
Oh my god, I hate using eye drops, bro. But look, even eye drops don't use sriracha caps. Why? Because of risk of contamination. Oh, for fuck. Now, whenever possible, try to use brands that don't use the sriracha caps. Now, I know only of one company that does these. I never heard of them before. I just randomly stumbled upon them while doing research for that video. And this company is World Famous Inc. I'm just kidding, of course, I'm sponsored by them. But listen, would I be promoting them if I wouldn't be using them myself? No. Would I be promoting anyone that cuts me a nice check? Probably. Does that make me a capitalist whore now? The point is this. On this channel, we hold people to account. Except for the people I personally benefit from. It's called conflict of interest. Read about it. Anyway, they're the only company that cuts me a check. I mean, recognized the problem with Sriracha caps and made a serious investment to better the safety and convenience of the product. This is what I call an actual industry leader. Someone willing to introduce change and take the risk. The system that world famous inks use also have two points of contact, but those two points of contact are not exposed to the environment at all times and do not require the operator to actually touch them to use. They are sealed at all times. It's obviously a better system. Intense, Sriracha and others, they have three points of contact with the ink, of which two are at all times exposed to the environment and by design have to be touched by the operator in these areas that come in direct contact with inks flowing over and under them. It's an actual ridiculous joke. I know some of you didn't like the new world famous ink bottles. And when you were younger, you also probably didn't like helmets. The point here is, this is about safety. It's not about your convenience. Guys, listen, it would be super convenient for my eye drops to also have sriracha caps on, but it'd be a lot less safe. And listen, I'm not talking to the artists here either. I'm talking to the ink manufacturers. You don't have to license that. It has a pattern, obviously, that's how business works. You can design your own special bottle. Can you imagine your own safe little bottle? Come on, guys. So it's absolutely clear with no debate to be had. This system is outdated and it should never be used in any liquids used in surgical procedures, which tattooing represents according to the International Classification of Surgical Procedures in Medicine. Christ almighty, you won't even find that system on fucking eye drops. What are we doing? Now, what Intense Ink has done is double down in the dumbest way possible. On the most straightforward issue, a toddler can recognize and understand. You've changed the color of the caps and left the same system that should never be used in the first place on it. I've got PTSD from that now. I'm opening Sriracha caps at home with paper towel. Now I can appreciate on the newer ones, you don't have to peel off the safety seal and they're sterile. But that's a small inconvenience you have to do once and never again. And if I'm completely honest, I prefer the safety seal to be on because when the inks arrive from fuck knows where, at least I have some measure of knowing whether the ink's been compromised in any way. When you're getting hundreds of inks a year, sometimes the safety seal is broken. But in these new ones, there's no way for me to actually tell if the ink's been compromised in any way. I just have to trust my gut that that system actually works. Only for me then to contaminate it myself a million times over and then cleaning the top of the lid with alcohol wipes like an idiot because it's exposed at all times to dust, to fucking whatever. Now, unlike Sriracha, Intense Ink ships with screws inside. You hear this sound? That's a screw. <laughs> if you actually have ever finished a bottle of Intense, you'll find there's a screw inside. Whoever thought that that was a good idea had to finish quite a few bottles consecutively themselves. I wouldn't even like to see screws in my sriracha. 
and I'm not exactly thrilled to see them in inks. That issue is not relevant at the moment and I don't see an immediate issue with it except for maybe whilst shaking the inks the hard edges from the screw may potentially scrape off tiny bits of microplastic which we then administer in the client system. And of course the optics of it also don't look great. Something round seems more appropriate. That would be my guess. Anyway, let's get back to the bottles. Now, there is clear EU, UK and US regulations that prohibit any liquids used in medicine to exist in that form factor, for good reason. Now, I don't know why, but tattoo ink is actually classified as a cosmetic product. Now, let's look what tattooing would be considered as just based on the nature of the procedure. In compliance with the International Classification of Surgical Procedures in Medicine, tattooing represents a surgical procedure with its own operations and procedures. Don't get big-headed and start telling people you're a surgeon. Most of you are dangerous, reckless animals. Hence for why we have to have those conversations here, so we can then move forward to tutorials and actual work. It's classified this way because it has risk factors in line with medical procedures and consequences severe enough, which is why it falls under the umbrella. Studies show that inks themselves can be a risk factor, opened and closed, as if you need a study for that, obviously it's common sense. And here is where we have to be a bit honest. We all know how most people handle inks, don't we? The manufacturers certainly do. How many times have you seen a son of a bitch open the inks with their bare hands? But there's plenty of straightforward ways to minimize the risks and we'll have a look at them a bit later in this video. Let's first have a look at a study conducted by the Deutsches Arzteblatt International. A total of 39 inks originating from open veils that were randomly collected by local health inspectors during the 10th International Convention in Rüttlingen, Germany, were analyzed. Enumeration and detection of aerobic mesophilic bacteria were performed in accordance with the validated guidelines for the microbiological analysis of cosmetic products, as was the detection of specific and non-specific microorganisms, including Escherichia coli, Pseudonymus aeruginosa, and Staphylococcus aureus. Isolates from the contaminated sand Samples were then subcultures for further identification by matrix-assisted laser desorption ionization, time of flight, mass spectrometry, and 16S rRNA gene sequencing. Among the 39 colorants investigated, two, which represents 5%, were contaminated with aerobic mesophilic bacteria. 10 to the power of 7th bacteria per gram of ink. Now, obviously, a bigger sample size would be better, or even necessary to more accurately depict the likelihood of a contaminated bottle per point of reference. I mean, at least a like a thousand at least really i also wish we had data on when the inks were open if we had a huge sample size and also data on when the inks were opened then we could kind of have a chart that would predict age versus risk of contamination i'm not sure how that would be useful though because that would only reflect the balance of inks handled correctly and then inks handled recklessly now if we will further separate that chart based on the manufacturer I'm willing to bet that the companies such as World Famous that don't use the Sriracha bottle caps would drastically outperform the ones that do, such as Intense and Eternal and whatnot, because it's just simply way too easy to contaminate them. It's way too easy to touch, well, well I mean, you have to touch them there. It's really simple and it's so, it's so straightforward and I'm looking forward to the comments. But this study in particular also found contaminated closed bottles of ink. This study also rightfully acknowledges that because of the ubiquitous nature of these microorganisms in the environment, it means that contamination during collection and processing remains a possibility. I certainly appreciate they've included that, but it's certainly unsurprising based on the professionalism of the whole read. So in this video, we must proceed with the assumption we're the ones contaminating the inks. First of all, because we don't actually know whether they tested closed bottles of reputable brands or some eBay and Amazon trash as well. And the studies from 2015 or 2016 when the inks were actually collected and tested. So essentially we're actually erasing eight years of progress of um, advancements as far as you know sterilization in the ink manufacturer's process goes. And lastly, because the goal of our conversation today is to do what we can do as best as we can do it on our end to protect inks and clients better and to motivate manufacturers to produce better and safer products. And even though this study is limited in the sample size and it's quite outdated really, I'm bringing up this study to show that certainly there are people looking at what we're doing. And look, I really believe that much of the ink contamination on our end 
what we're responsible for, I think it has a strong correlation with the way the bottles are designed. It's really unpractical to always, every time you use it, wipe it with alcohol. And obviously that's not perfect either. But I do think it's the responsibility of the industry leaders, you know, manufacturers to guide and lead and educate the artists to do it better. I'm gonna link both of the studies in the description so you can have a read through yourself and come to your own conclusions. They're not discussing the packaging really, but I do think there's a huge problem that lies in the packaging itself. Not the packaging necessarily, but the containers the inks are actually in. Now I'm not suggesting to bin your intense, eternal or fusion inks. If you do decide to bin the intense ones though, make sure to at least take the screws out and you know, save some money. I'm not the one that's gonna bring about more regulation. It's these complacent companies that are willfully blind to these facts that will. Again, the question we're facing today isn't exactly rocket science. Which one is more likely to get contaminated? The at all times exposed sriracha cap or the closed cap on America's favorite mustard. The fact I have to sit here and discuss this with the tattoo industry leaders, it's so fucking embarrassing. Now, good companies that manufacture toys for toddlers study and understand how the toddlers use their product. They assume a degree of responsibility. They make sure the toys aren't swallowed easily. They make sure the toys are easier to clean. They make sure there's no hard edges that the child could hurt themselves on. You get the point here. It's always easy to point fingers and dodge responsibility. And yet, of course, the artists have to handle the inks correctly to the best of their ability. But if there's a clear design flaw on the product itself that's been used for decades, that could be improved upon to minimize risk of contamination, I mean, the choice then is quite obvious. Look, the excuse can't always be, well, it's the artist's responsibility to keep the inks clean and free from contamination. I get that, but you can't have that argument all the time if the design or the product in question is exposed sriracha caps, for Christ. And look, it's ridiculous to assume that most tattooists are handling the inks correctly. You guys, the manufacturers, you guys know how reckless most tattooists are. And honestly, you can't really blame them because they look up to you, the industry leaders, the reckless industry leaders with reckless products, with no attempt of making them better. You guys won't attempt a simple bottle cap. But if that's truly your rationale and you assume that us artists are doing as best as we can on our end, and you don't do anything on your end to improve safety where there clearly is margin to improve it, now that is just sad and embarrassing. The client expects the artist to know better, the artists expect the companies to know better, and companies like FKI's Intense Eternal Fusion, you guys couldn't give a fuck. It is truly an embarrassing, pathetic joke. And those people leading these companies aren't stupid. They just don't give a shit. They would rather double down and lead artists and everybody else in the wrong direction rather than to make an investment for a better and safer product. I am honestly speechless. Well, I don't know about speechless because here I am. And I'm honestly hoping for the new up and coming ink brands that are more agile and less rigid in the ways they conduct business to invest in better and safer products and position themselves as one of the first companies that are actually doing the right things and doing the steps necessary to avoid heavy-handed regulation, which other companies like Intense and the Cowboys at Barber DTS are actually inviting. Barber DTS selling inks in fucking banned regions with a disclaimer. The ink shouldn't be administered in a client's. Are you out of your mind? Obviously, you know, people will use them to tattoo or fucking micropigmentations or whatever. That is just inviting regulators to come knocking. And then when shit hits the fan, they're gonna again be asking artists and clients, please sign this and that petition. Why? Because you reckless idiots are poking the bear. Unfortunately, we're only scratching the surface with the greed and negligence infecting this industry. And fuckboys and thoughts.
had to slide that in. This is again, one of these common sense situations that must be called out and we must demand better and safer products from the manufacturers. The ink manufacturers already had a regulatory scare when the fucking regulators came out with the disposable single use ink caps and you still haven't learned. No, in fact, you doubled down on the Sriracha caps. I mean, the, the stupidity in this company is breathtaking. God forbid we take the risk and take Sriracha caps off the inks. And if simple things like that are too hard to recognize, to change, to minimize risk, if that's too hard to understand and recognize, then it doesn't exactly fill me with confidence. They're making the right choices and decisions when it comes to things that I have no way of knowing whether they're better for my clients. It is precisely this kind of stupidity and recklessness that doesn't fill me with confidence that this market is self-regulating, as much as I would love to believe it is. Of course, there was a lot of progress made. Of course there was. But simple, easy things, sriracha caps, like sealed pen machines for Christ's sake. FK Irons comes out, announces a new sealed pen machine. I cannot believe this cloud. Before I said I have nothing against them. Now it's personal, now I do. Because you didn't listen to the second coming, Messiah me. I urge these companies to start making a change for the better themselves before they're faced with heavy-handed regulators. It will happen because it must happen because these idiots are clearly incompetent and incapable of running a healthy industry. All they care about these days is the bottom line and tits. Like me. Show the governments that we already are exercising common sense and that we already are making a change for the better as far as hygiene and safety standards are concerned. Now the fact Intense Inc. doubled down with the Sriracha caps and fucking FKI is doubling down with another sealed machine, that kind of shit doesn't shock me at all. What would really shock me would be companies like these, like FKI is and Intense them taking any form of agency or accountability or responsibility. Even a response would be almighty. That is what would really shock me. To minimize the risks, 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 and I'm willing to bet it's crazy. It's crazy. Is that my fucking haircut? What? What is that? Depending, depending of this. We, re we repeat. I can't, I cannot, I cannot. But the manufacturer goes for Christ. Organisms. Fuck it, I'm done. I'm done here. Let me move on here quick.